says. We were talking about that yesterday, about the new building. We get the new building. I don't know how we're going to clean that new building. I don't know how we're going to do it yet. It'll get done, but I, I'll tell you one thing. Is we're going to have to figure out how to clean a, a huge building. Um, more than just one person popping in for a couple hours on Saturday. Probably have to have people there cleaning every day. You know, but hey, it's going to have to be done. So what are we going to do? We're going to sit around and complain about it? No, who's going to clean the building? Oh, no, we've got to get the building clean. We're going to have to hire an outside crew. We should never have to, have to hire anybody from the outside to do what we should be doing as a church. Right? But there's apathy today. Um, Proverbs 10.26. I got these written down, but I'll have you turn to some of them. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse <clears throat> 26. You know, the book of Proverbs has a lot to say about laziness and working. Bunch of sluggards, yeah, in the book of Proverbs. God doesn't have anything good to say about a sluggard. I noticed that reading, reading the book of Proverbs. Nothing good about a sluggard written in the Bible anywhere. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 26 it says, as vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eye, so is the sluggard to them that send him. The sluggard. Look at Proverbs 13.4. 13.4. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. That makes sense. You do nothing, you deserve nothing. You work hard, you deserve something when you work hard. Amen? You go to work every day or however how you, your, your working is, and by the end of the week or every other week, however you get paid, you're paid for what you do. I believe that. I believe you ought to get paid for what you do, and I, ought to believe, I believe it ought to be a fair wage. These crazy people that play these games, football, baseball, they make millions and millions of dollars. And some of them, some of these guys, I mean, they'll strike out more than they get on base, and yet they're paid $20 million a year. I think you ought to get paid by when you get on base. You strike out, that's it. You're not getting paid. That's the way it ought to be. That's, that's in my book. I couldn't, I couldn't own a baseball team. They wouldn't, nobody would want to play for me. But you want to you wanna, you wanna earn your money? Earn your money. I don't think you ought to pay somebody if they don't work. If I owned a business and you came to work for me and you just sat on your little <clears throat> blessed assurance all day long and did nothing, I'm sorry, you wouldn't get a whole lot of payment from me. I know the union would probably step in and make me pay you, but anyway, <clears throat> where was I? Proverbs 18.9. Proverbs 18.9. Proverbs 18.9 says, And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. And Oh, wait, I'm back in Matthew. Wait a minute. Let me get back to Proverbs. Wrong verse. Wrong book. Wrong testament. Wrong everything. What a, what a nut you got up here behind the pulpit. All right, 18.9. Here we go. That looks better. He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. And so we seem to see apathy in service. Let me move on here. How about apathy toward the Scriptures? Write that one down. Apathy toward the Scriptures. Reading just to read, to get nothing from your Bible. Our Sunday school lessons the last two weeks with Brother Scott has been a blessing to me. I, I've really enjoyed that. I've, I've gotten a lot out of it. I, I think he's done a fantastic job, and he's going to do one more next, next week. Uh, really get us into the Bible to see the, the, just the words. I mean, the, this Bible is full of words. I forget how many words there are. It's over 700,000 words. I forget what it is. Um, but this Bible is just it's full of words. And you've got to know what the words say. You, you should know what the words mean when you read your Bible. But there seems to be apathy today towards scriptures. Um, people don't even want to read their Bible sometimes today. I'm amazed at Christians that claim to be Christian and they won't read their Bible. They won't study their Bible. They don't know anything what the Bible has to say at all because they just don't want to read it. But they'll sit down and watch TV all day long or all night long 
or get on their devices all day long or all night long, or do all this other stuff. But when it comes time to Bible, for Bible study or Bible reading, there's a lot of apathy involved. We want to read it quick and get the answers that we need or want and then move on to something else. That's kind of the way we're programmed, it seems like, today. But it takes study. It takes read and study and reading and study and study and reading and to get what God has for us. I like what Brother Scott said. You've got to dig into this book. This is a deep book. Not a whole lot of deep Christians, it seems like, today. You want to be a deep Christian, you've got to dig deep into the book. The fourth thing is, is apathy towards souls, the lost and the saved. Passing out tracts and witnessing is something that seems like of the past. Or someone else will do it. We're talking today, my wife, she'll, she'll chase you down in the parking lot. And she doesn't move that fast. You see her move around here. You know, I'm not picking on you, but she doesn't move that fast as fast as she used to. I can get away from her without any problem nowadays. I mean, I just, a couple, couple leaps with my legs and I'm out of her reach. Um, she, well, she does. She throws things. No, she does, she does not. No, she gave that up a few years ago. <laughs> she stopped throwing knives at me a, a while ago. So. <clears throat> yeah, she, when she has the opportunity, the cane comes knocking at my knees. So. <laughs> Uh, but she'll chase somebody down in the parking lot. She did that, I think it was yesterday or the day before. She was somewhere with Suzanne, and, and she had to chase this guy down and give him a track. One day, she started following a person in their car. This old 90-year-old man, she wanted, to make, she wanted to see where he lives so she could send me to go and talk to him. So she's, she's following this guy. I said, Kath, you're stalking people. You've got to be careful. You don't want to be labeled as a stalker, do you? I mean, you, you got to be careful on how you do, but at least she's not apathetic towards souls. She's going to go out and she's going to get them. She's going to get them. We all, we all ought to be like that. See, somebody needs a track, get it, get it to them. Invite them to church. She, that's what she did yesterday, the other day. She invited this, this husband and wife to church, and they were appreciative of that. And that's what we need to do. But there's so much apathy towards souls today. And then number five, there's apathy towards the Savior. We just don't want to spend time with the Lord anymore. we got other things to do. and There's a lot of apathy towards the Savior. And so one way to kill your church is be apathetic. But here's the next one, the B. Thomas, you hit that a little while ago. You said gossip. I got B for busybody. Busybody. One who overbearingly concerns him or herself with the affairs of others. A meddling person. That's a busybody. You got to know everything about everybody. You got to get involved in everybody's life. Did you hear about so and so? No, but tell me all that you know. <laughs> Look at 1 Timothy 5.13. 1 Timothy 5.13. Again, this is, this is how you can kill a church. Is with the apathy and then with being a busybody. So don't be a busybody and don't be apathetic. Get involved and be busy and doing things for the Lord. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. And with all, they learn to be idle. Did you see where they learn to be idle? That's what Paul says. Wandering about from house to house and not uh, only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. There's a warning Paul has given to Timothy about some of the stuff that could be going on in, in that early church. But how about in today's church? We have some of that going on in today's church. Today we got cell phones and texting and email and all kinds of ways to communicate and talk about other people. Shame on us. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 11. 2 Thessalonians 3.11. Don't be a busybody. You could kill your church. I wouldn't want to stand in front of the Lord Jesus Christ someday at the judgment seat of Christ and be blamed for shutting my church down. Or for destroying my church, would you? 
<clears throat> I hope not. 2 Thessalonians 3.11 For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Well, the verse prior to that, verse 10, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, what's it say? Neither should he eat. That's pretty serious. No work, no eat. The problem is, is for those that aren't working, they're running around being busybodies because they have nothing else to do. So that becomes their hobby. 1 Peter 4.15. 1 Peter 4.15. What's that saying? Idle hands is the devil's workshop, or an idle mind is the devil's something. I mean, they all go together. If you're just sitting around doing absolutely nothing and not busy working and being involved in things, uh, you're opening yourself to all kinds of wickedness. 1 Peter 4.15, it says, But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Did you see that he lumped the busybody in with the murderers, the thieves, and the evildoers? All in one verse. The busybody is there. Uh, and then, of course, in Proverbs chapter 6, go over to Proverbs 6. <clears throat> Proverbs 6. Are we still okay tonight? We? You know I love you, right? I'm only trying to help. What? I, I missed whatever was going on back there. It's probably a good thing. Is that your father? We'll talk later. Earl. May have to take a trip outside. I don't know yet. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. It says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination. So remember that, that word abomination unto him. So they're all, I believe they're all an abomination. Wouldn't you say that? I'd say yes. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that devises with wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren, that is even an abomination. It's an abomination. I mean, it's a, a means a feeling of this extreme disgust and hatred with God. Is what that means. We have no problem naming some of the abominations in the Bible, but this one we kind of tiptoe around. All right, the last, the ABCs of destroying your church or killing your church. Letter A is what? Apathy. B is. C is compromise. Write that down. Compromise. The sin of compromise brings a swift destruction, a swift decline, and a death to a church. Compromise. What do I mean by compromise? Well, we, people compromise in, in, in belief systems, false religions. There's compromise today. Sin and sinful things. There's compromise in the scriptures today. We were talking about that at lunch today with the Scots. We're thankful that we were brought up in a King James only church. We were, Kathy was saved. Uh, I was saved in a King James only church. We went to a King James only church. That's all we've known. We've never been in another church that preaches another, a different book. It's always been King James. We had pastors that taught us the importance of the, the pure word of God. And we've just been that way. I'm so thankful that we have no problem with that. We have no problem with the King James Bible. Uh, we understand what the words say. We understand the these and the thous and the thines and have no problem, no issues with that. I don't read anything else. I don't study any other book. I, this is the book that we read and study from and preach from. But there's a lot of churches that are compromising on the Bible. Well, we, want, we want to make it easier for our folks. You're not making it easier. 
Brother Scott touched on that this morning. I really like what he said this morning. And then there's the compromise in the music standards. Music is going by the wayside. Standards are going by the wayside today uh, in our churches. Uh, we want the jazzier music. We want the louder beat. We want the drums on the stage. We want the, you know, all the stuff up here to, to look like we're entertaining people. And that's what a lot of churches are going in that manner. Dress standards. Now, we don't harp on that here, do we? Do I, do I get up here every week and bow, pound on the, you ladies, you need, and guys, you need, no, I don't do that. Do I? No. I don't think I do. I don't harp on dress standards. I think we ought to dress like we're Christians. Amen. Period. That's okay, right? You dress like a Christian. I think men ought to look like men and ladies ought to look like ladies. Amen. That's biblical. Even in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses told the people that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But when our standards are the world's standards, we've compromised. And it won't be long before the doors close, I think. Yeah. Psalm 57, 7 says, My heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Psalm 112, verse 7, He shall not be afraid of evil things, evil tidings, I'm sorry, His heart is fixed, trusted in the Lord. We need to fix ourselves and stay true to God. Stay true to the Word of God. Stay true to our standards. We, there's no room for compromise uh, in, in churches today. Now look, we, okay, you have an idea that you'd like to do something in the church, we can talk about it. I'm, we're not against that. People come up with good ideas all the time. Hey, I like that idea. That's, that's a good thing. That's not a compromise. That's just uh, agreeing to be able to do some things more efficiently, um, better. Uh, you know, that's not... But when you come to me and say, Pastor, I think we ought to use an NIV. We're going to have some issues. Now, I'm not going to yell and scream at you, and I'm going to not, you know, I'm not, I'm going to try not to pop you in the nose. <laughs> not going to do that. I'm going to sit down and, and explain to you that King James is the Word of God, and that's where we stand. Amen. Don't come into church trying to change our Bible. Amen. Don't come into church trying to change the music. Amen. 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 Don't come into church trying to change some things. There's people that will do that. We're not going to compromise on things. We're going to stay firm. We're going to stay true. Um, you want something different, Listen, all you got to do is head down the street, head down the road that way, this way, this way, that northeast, southwest. You'll find a church that has the music that you want. You'll find a church that uses the Bible that you want. You'll find a church that has the standards that you want, right? I mean, that's all you got to do is just, I'm not saying, I don't want to see anybody leave the church. We want to be a magnet and bring everybody in. But we're going to have some standards when we do that. We're just going to, that's the way we are. So, we talked about the ABCs of church death. What are they? Apathy, busybody, compromise. I hope and pray that none of us are ever accused of trying to destroy our church, including the preacher, including the next preacher. If I step aside someday, retire, die, that's possible. Uh, Tuesday, I'll be three score and ten. I will have made it to the biblical three score and ten if I make it till Tuesday, unless Kathy kills me between now and then. <laughs> you're not going to, you're not going to, uh, okay, good, good. But uh, I, hey, any one of us can go at any time. And I just hope and pray that the church will continue Let's work together. Let's, let's join together, work together, love one another, love the church that Jesus died for and, and loves, and say, hey, whatever needs to be done here, let's do it together. Yeah. Amen. Father, thank you for the scriptures we looked at tonight. Lord, I pray that nobody in this church would ever want to try to destroy this church. But Lord, that we would all work together, love one another,